so during treatment, I think Kyle and I are, are kind of thought of how to deal with this horrible disease um, and was to make her as much like as comfortable as she could be. So we were always very concerned about how many tests they were doing um, and kind of when can she come home. We tried to keep her at home as much as possible because she was just so much more comfortable um, here because she could have Evie here at all times. And so we had to weigh those decisions. Um, we did have to do some long hospital stays and we would find we got in a really good rhythm there. Um, and so we built like a whole routine. And so we'd get up in the morning, we knew that the doctors were going to round at a certain time. So we would get dressed, shower, get breakfast, ordered for her. Kyle would run to the cafeteria, bring our breakfast up. And I mean, we were ready to go like for when you didn't know kind of exactly what time they were going to round on her. But I mean, we were both there and I mean, ready with our questions and that was a big part of our day. And that, that was really important for us because uh, as you said, we were kind of traditional caregivers and her being three, we were her advocates here. She didn't really understand what was wrong or what was going on. She knew she was sick in some ways and that her body wasn't acting like it should. Um, but, but we were there and ready to go to ask those questions and, and keep advocating for her and, and keep, I can remember at one point, I think we had, we asked for a, different nurse because one nurse was having trouble like trying to stick needles and like just stick oh. needles because she was so small and so young and so like we would push and be like no let's go get somebody more experienced or well, some, you know somebody's better at it yeah and that was another thing we found out that they had a team at children's mercy who all they did was draws and so we would just tell them like oh you need to take more you know blood okay we understand that um call that team in because we're not going to mess around in that team. I mean, they would take samples, uh, I mean, from her foot because her veins were so overused. Um, they would, yeah, use her kind of foot and ankle area if they had to. So they were just, um, they were the pros. And so we would, we didn't, we would just speak up on her behalf, like, hey, this is what we need. The other thing that um, she preferred was she liked to take baths and like being in bath water was very calming to her. Well, at the hospital, they had been going through a renovation where they took out all the tubs. So the old rooms had bathtubs and the new rooms just had walk-in showers. And she would just cry if she had to take yeah. a shower. And so when they would say, okay, you're gonna have to go to the floor, I would say, give us the old room, please, please, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, she would sit in the tub a couple times a day just because it felt good to her. Um, so that was really key for us. Yeah. And that was, that was regards like after she had her massive seizure, like her, how she reacted neurologically changed and she had different symptoms and stuff. So like she had a chewing thing where she had to chew on something all day and stuff. So it's like her nerves weren't functioning quite right. So I think the shower was just completely overwhelming sensory wise. Um, and the bath just it really like, she loved it. It, it yeah. shut her down and she'd have toys in there and play and she'd, and she'd be, just kind of splash. She'd be happy as can yeah. be in there. But the, that's a good point you brought up about. So one of the things is that the tumor made her feel like she needed to constantly chew on something. And normally I would have been like, stop chewing, you know, like to your child. And luckily at the hospital, they explained like, this is a, a side effect that she's experiencing. And so they brought her actually like um, baby teethers and she had one and she would just grind on it and she would just hold it and was in the shape of a little hammer and she would just gnaw at it. And they basically had explained to us, we're not gonna be able to stop that behavior and she needs to be able to uh, do it in a safe manner. 